Hey guys, you got Chelsea Theodoropoulos here. Welcome to the Burn Bootcamp podcast. So I'm gonna go through some questions, a little Q&A here. I have lots of questions in front of me and I am so excited to share a little bit more of my story from a franchise partner perspective as well as from a member. So first question, just getting to know a little bit more about me and my journey with Burn Bootcamp. So I started in early 2015, just after my daughter was born, my second child. And I remember just being so exhausted. She was not sleeping through the night at all. And I was in a really low point in my life, actually. My husband was at the peak of his entrepreneurial journey. Uh, it seemed like in, in a lot of ways, we were just waiting for his heart attack to happen. He was waking up with chest pains in the middle of the night. Uh, my brand new marriage felt like it was falling apart. I had these two little babies and I had lost a big piece of myself and it was it was a very lonely place to be. And so when I joined Burn Bootcamp, at this point, I just wanted to lose my baby weight. And so I came on a free Saturday. I had 10, 15 pounds to lose, maybe I forget at this point. And I remember women just jumping all around me. And I, they were, everybody was so kind and so gracious to me that there was really no space for judgment or resentment towards them. I could only be inspired. Uh, they kept high-fiving me, they were cheering for me, celebrating me, and I couldn't do half of what they were doing. It was truly inspiring. And I, I, wasn't, I didn't even know where my arms and legs were. My, my body awareness was off. Uh, I wasn't getting any sleep. And I, the inner athlete within me was was so buried deep inside of me that it really did take some time for her to come back out and so when i started off as a member in early 2015 i felt a spark within me come alive and for those 45 minutes i really was able to be chelsea and i wasn't mom and i wasn't wife and nobody was asking me to get them a cheese stick or make chicken nuggets or i didn't have to wipe anybody's anybody's butt and like it was just it was therapeutic in a lot of ways to have this release within me to just be me and to work on myself. So when that happened, I started to really dive deep into my own transformation and those physical goals that I had became so much more meaningful to me. Uh, I had tons and tons of focus meetings. I don't know how many, but it feels like a, probably a hundred. And I really started to educate myself on, on why I should eat more protein and why I should drink more water. and all these, why sleep and recovery is important. And it helped me, it helped me really create the systems and the process for me to succeed because I had the education behind it. So I started to really build confidence within me. I started to feel empowered. I started to make so many new friends and something really special was happening around me and also within me. So I wanted to play a bigger part in my Burn Bootcamp member journey. And so I became a fit member ambassador in FMA and that was fun. So it wasn't enough that I still wanted to do more. So when Burn Bootcamp started franchising, I decided, why not? Well, when I took that approach to my husband, he gave me a long list of reasons of why not is because he was at the peak of his business uh, stress and we are not at a great place in our life to take on more responsibility and more stress. And so, uh, or really just a different focus. And so for a while it was, you've lost your mind. No way, no way, no way, no way. And simultaneously, his mom moved in with us. She was terminally ill. And I shifted from working full time, being home with my babies, to now I was her primary caretaker. And <clears throat> the day that she passed away in our home truly was pivotal for us because she was tied to her oxygen machine. She had pulmonary fibrosis. She never left her bedroom. And the sound of the oxygen machine throughout our home became a white noise that we had all the time. And when we had unplugged her oxygen machine, there was this space that kind of died within us, but also came alive of, it was ironic that this woman that had just died sparked so much meaning and life into us, right? And there was, it was pure silence in our home and that we felt conflicted because a piece of us felt like we have just wasted so much of our life chasing this, chasing this, whatever this was, and not feeling joy out of it. And life is so short and it's so fragile, and she gave us that reminder. And so we literally got in the car, we drove to Disney, we took our kids to Disney the day, for a day. It was not a great decision, and uh, because it was so expensive, not planned, and all of that good stuff. But 
the point is, is she reminded us how fragile life is. And at that point, our mindset shifted in what it is we want to do with our life and the impact that we want to have on this world. So my husband and I had revisited the idea. And at this point, Burn Boot Camp is wildly successful. And we bought into the franchise. We did a ton of research. And we said, okay, a lot of sleepless nights. We had a hard time making the decision because it was such a huge change for us. We, we've been in the small business game and the small business world for a long time. My husband's been an entrepreneur for almost his entire life. He far, started his first collection agency when he was about 20 years old. And so I've, been, I've had the front row seat of seeing him grow his multiple businesses and then also my father as an entrepreneur. But being in the driver's seat was gonna be a little bit different. And so I struggled with the decision because at first I had a moment of, I can't do that. I'm not qualified to do that. And then I kept reminding myself of the thoughts and the mindset of everything that I've, that people around me have been pouring into me of, well, why, why can't I? Yes, I can, I can do that. And so I started to shift my mindset and with support and help of other people, I started to remind myself that I can do this and I, I am capable of doing this. And so we bought into the Burn Boot Camp franchise and we moved to St. Louis. And so I think that's actually another question here is, uh, what was that like? It was, it, was, uh, it was a lot of things, actually. It was scary. It was lonely at first. Um, and it was exhilarating. And so we did a lot of market research. We definitely did our due diligence. We landed in St. Louis very intentionally, and we didn't know a soul there. And it felt like the odds were stacked against us in that way, but I kept reminding myself that we're moving here very intentionally. This does make sense. I know what the vision looks like. I'm capable of doing this. I can execute, let's go. And so when I first moved, I was planning on, well, actually, I, I didn't actually move at first. My family was still living here in Charlotte, North Carolina, and that's, that's where I was living for 15 years or so. I started off, I think I missed this point, but I started off uh, when I was a member at the Burn Boot Camp Huntersville Gym uh, with Devin. And so we were living here, had a, got married here, started our family here, and then we bought into the Burn Boot Camp franchise. Uh, St. Louis was, was a great market, and so we decided to move there. But before we decided to move there, I was just, I got in a plane, I was gonna casually, semi-casually go to St. Louis and open up our first gym, but then I had every intention of moving back and I was planning on running it remotely at first. I knew very well that we would have to move eventually, but at this point in time, there were a lot of remote owners and I thought, well, heck, they're doing it, I can do it too. Uh, we weren't quite at the place that we were ready to uproot our family completely. So I moved to St. Louis, I checked into my hotel and I got the gym open and saying goodbye to, at this point, my kids were two and five, almost three and five. Saying goodbye to them was for a month. And at this point it was, I'm only leaving for a month. I'll be back in 30 days, baby. I'll be back in 30 days. But the 30 days was, I was full of anxiety of how can I leave, how can I leave my babies for 30 days? And It felt impossible because they truly are the heart that extends outside my chest. It truly felt impossible. And so I opened up Burn Boot Camp Manchester, which opened up in November of 2017. And on day nine, my head trainer quit. And I'm thankful that I thought to get certified as a trainer um, before I opened up my first business to hedge my bets and it played out. And so on day 10, I stepped in and I was like, I guess I'm playing head trainer and I guess I can't go home. And so my one month stay at my hotel became two months and three months and four months. And it got to the point that I couldn't even talk to my babies on the phone because the sounds of their, their voices were just too, too precious and fragile for my heart to emotionally take in. And it's interesting though, because this period of my life was in many ways, it was the most electric, the most rewarding period of my entire life. When the sun was up and I was at the gym every morning at 4 a.m., I watched every sunrise, I watched every sunset. I was there for 15, 16, 17 hours a day and I was surrounded by so much love. 
and that kept me going. It was it was a giant distraction, but it was it was so much love that I at that point I, I didn't want to be anywhere else. And then all of a sudden the last member, the last teammate would leave and I had to go back to my hotel room. And that was lonely. That was hard. That was hard. So by the time we got to five months, I was desperate of feeling that way, of just the, the ups and downs emotionally. And I begged my husband, I was like, just sell the house, get rid of everything, I don't care, just sell the house and move to St. Louis. You, you guys have to get here, we have to get underneath one roof. So we did, and they flew out. We looked at different houses, and it's interesting too, like looking back in this period of my life, we looked at so many different houses, and I don't really have memories of that time. I think I just was so emotionally fragile and raw that I don't remember, I don't have a lot of vivid memories, but we bought a house and it coming all together just made it that much more meaningful and the community that I had built during that time, that dedicated focus with my team, with my members, it was worth it. And I tell my children that today of, you know, we reflect often back on that time of when mommy had to leave and it's like, mommy had to leave because I was trying to help people, trying to make an impact, and mommy was pursuing her dream. And we have to go through, through things in life that are scary and they're hard. And if you know that you can do something, you can make a difference, you have to go anyways. And so I remind myself and them of that constantly to make that time well worth it, and it was. So that was quite an experience, and it's obvious that I haven't fully healed from that because I can tap into that part of my life so, um, the emotion is still very present, obviously, within me because it was, it was just, it was very light and then it was very dark simultaneously in the same day. So that was an interesting experience, but I wouldn't have changed it for the world. I learned so much about myself and uh, the members that I still have today, uh, there's many members that I have from that season of my burn journey that are still with me today. And it's, it's neat to reflect back on that period of my life with them. And uh, so I'm thankful. So I think, you know, if somebody is thinking about moving out of state, it is scary. And it's one of those things that you have to do a lot of soul searching of, what do you want more? Do you want, do you want to live where you're living more? Or do you want to make an impact more? And I don't think there's a right or wrong answer, but you know, for me living here in Charlotte, I, I loved it. And I, I have lots and lots of friends here. I, I really did love it here but my calling, my calling was stronger. And so for us, it, it was the right decision. And um, I would also say too, that I was so ignorant about, about St. Louis, I'd never been before. I didn't know anybody there. And so <clears throat> making that leap, not knowing if it was the right decision. And now I realize in hindsight, how ignorant I was and what a hidden gem. St. Louis is one of the greatest cities um, in this country. I truly believe that. And it's the people that make it that way. So. It's been great. <clears throat> okay. Uh, what are some of the biggest challenges you face as a franchise owner and how have you overcome them? So that was a challenge, what I just talked about. <laughs> there was a little bit of a challenge. I would say uh, there's been a lot of challenges. I feel like every day is a challenge in a new way, but also very rewarding. Uh, leadership is lonely. Leadership is very lonely. Uh, and so because of that, I have had to surround myself with other business owners um, to help me better as a person and to help me better as a leader, but also to, to cope with different situations and to heal through different situations. And so that's helped me grow as a person uh, and also as a franchise partner. I would say it's also been a challenge where I had a dream of opening up Burn Boot Camp and I loved, I loved training. I felt so much passion from training and being on the floor with members just gives me so much joy and so much life. But I also wanted to grow and I also wanted to scale and I wanted more than one location. And so finding that balance between being able to do truly what I love, being on the floor, but also scale and grow, how do I make these two things happen? And there, I, I struggled to do that. And so I had to give up something. And so I've had to remind myself often throughout the years of the, the importance of both the breadth and the depth of impact, of me pulling away from training. And by doing that, even though I love it so much, 
it's given me the ability and the privilege to open up more gyms. And so now I have four open locations, um, all in St. Louis. I have Manchester, O'Fallon, South County, and Kirkwood, and I'm actively working on my fifth location in St. Charles. And if I held on so tight to training, I wouldn't have had the opportunity to open up those four other locations, and I wouldn't have been able to impact and help that many more people and so for me that's worth it even though I do love to train and I'm still very stubborn about my schedule I still train a little bit uh, and that's allowed me to have both but I think that's been one of the biggest challenges that I've had is being in the gym all day every day and having to pull myself out and really go from acting as a trainer but now I'm acting as a franchise partner I have to act as a business owner and I can't act as a business owner when I'm in the gym training all the time um, I really have to take a step back and, and see things at a, at a higher level so I can, I can help position us for, for more success. So that's been interesting. Um, I would say another challenge is building a really strong team. It's been one of the most rewarding things that I've done because my team is so, my team is just rock stars. They really, really are. My team is legit rock stars. And it's taken me a while to understand what does that look like? What is the culture that I'm trying to create? And what does that teammate look like so we can make the biggest impact possible? And when I can build a team around me who serves with purpose and they can connect with everybody and they truly do bleed blue, it, it allowed me to go open up more gyms. And so I had to, uh, I had to step over my ego and say, you can't do everything. You have to be able to delegate. You have to build a team around you so you can make more impact. And for me, as a franchise partner, I went into this thinking I had to know how to do every single role and I had to do every single role really, really well. I had to be the gold standard for every role. And if you asked my team, is Chelsea the gold standard of every role, they would laugh because that is, <laughs> That is not the case. They do not let me work the burn ambassador desk. Uh, Child watch, I think they'll let me in there, but uh, I, I know what I'm good at and I know what I'm not good at. And um, I needed people that could do the job better than me, a lot better than me. And I truly believe that when I was able to swallow my own ego and pride and say, I don't have to be the best at everything. And really I was just like spinning my wheels and it was a lot of mental energy and pressure I was putting on myself to to, to know how to do it all. And when I was able to let go of that and say, I'm actually not good at that at all. I'm really good at this, but I'm, I'm really, really bad at that. And so how can I build people around me that have the skill set needed for us to succeed? And how can we go really far together as a result of that? So that's taken time. That's taken a lot of time to build a really solid team, uh, especially when we've been growing so fast. I, we, we grew so fast that my needs were always changing. So that was hard to keep up with too is going from being, when you're in growth mode, high growth mode, it's hard to pause and take that time to be proactive. So I spent a lot of the time just being in the weeds and reacting and feeling, feeling like I was just trying to survive. Uh, and I, I would say that probably in the past year I've been able to find my groove and I attribute that solely to my team that have allowed me the space to find my groove, really tap into what I'm good at. So we all have our areas that that we excel in. So that's, that's been a fun challenge. I would say building a team has been a really fun challenge. Um, okay, <clears throat> next question. How did becoming a mom impact your fitness journey? Ah. So this one, this one is interesting because I, so I have two babies now. I call them babies, they're not babies. They're just babies in me. Uh, they're eight and 10. They're not even close to being babies. <laughs> they're like almost driving. Uh, <laughs> they're not babies, they're definitely just kids. Uh, so I have two kids, eight and 10, Connor and Clara. And my very first pregnancy, I lost. I was 20 weeks pregnant and I learned at my 20 week ultrasound that my baby had trisomy 13 and that I was not able to keep my baby, my pregnancy. And that was a, that hit me like a ton of bricks. That put me in a downward spiral because I, 
that was the last thing in my mind. I didn't even know what that existed. I didn't even know what that was. Uh, but essentially trisomy 13 is uh, incompatible with life, as they would call it. And uh, I, it, it, felt, it felt unfair in so many ways of I'm, I'm healthy, I'm young, why is this happening to me? And I, for a minute, I wanted to hang on to that victim mentality of this shouldn't be happening to me. And I doubled, I, that, that felt very toxic in my head. So I had to like reject that notion and I just had to double down on love and yearning for motherhood in the healthiest way that I knew how. And so I mentioned that because going through that experience put me in a significant downward spiral of depression. And I was in a very dark place, feeling very alone. Everybody around me was pregnant and I didn't quite know how to get out of that. I didn't know how to feel joy again. And I had convinced myself, I told myself, if I could just have a healthy child, I'll be happy. And I put all of my eggs in my happy bucket in as far as having a healthy child. And if I could just have a healthy child, I'll be happy. And so I was blessed with that, uh, two of them. And when I had, when I had both of my children, who are incredible, incredible gifts, I felt this emptiness within me still. And then I felt really guilty. That really, that really messed with me because then I, I still felt this sense of, I still felt this void within me of, I had prayed so hard and here you got what you wanted and you're still, you're, there's still a piece of you that doesn't feel right. And I had to overcome that of why, I had to do a lot of soul searching of why do I still feel this emptiness? I needed a sense of, accomplishment. I needed a sense of identity. I needed a purpose. I needed some type of impact and I didn't feel like I was getting that. And I remember sitting in therapy one day and uh, the therapist was like, well, you're, you're, Connor can, he knows his ABCs by the time he's 18 months. I don't know what, I don't know what he said to me, but something about like my, my son's success and all that he's doing and that I should, I should feel so much purpose and that my son, and I'm like, yeah, of course I'm proud of that, but it's not mine. It's not mine to, I, I need, I need purpose. And it shifted to when I had children, that, that really messed with my mind. Uh, I felt guilty for wanting more. I felt guilty for thinking about opening up Burn Boot Camp. And then that was actually very short lived. I was able to like put that in a box and throw it away because I kept reminding myself of like, no, it's okay. I can actually do both. And, and I was able to shift my mindset of, by me chasing my dreams and pursuing this passion that I have, I'm teaching my children how to always keep their sense of identity and to never, never give that up and to always be authentic to who they are, regardless of what society is telling you of, of this is what a good mother means and all of that. And so I had to let go of what I thought it meant to be a good mother. And I'm like, you know what, I'm going to do the very best that I can. And uh, I am going to show my daughter what it means because I hope that my daughter, when she is my age and she has her own children if she does that she doesn't lose a piece of herself and that she doesn't feel so conflicted to be only mom and have that be her only identity or be only wife that I want her to be able to be all the things if it brings her joy and so uh, we talk about that often a lot and I also want from my son's perspective from a male's perspective I want him to see the strength and the power of another female and of a woman. And I want him to support his wife someday to chase her dreams and to always keep her identity. So that's, that's pretty, uh, that's pretty, we talk about that a lot in our home. And when, when mommy has to uh, go to work for a long day or I have to do a work trip or whatever it is, I tell them always that, you know, mommy's, mommy's happy. Mommy's really, really happy. And I'm chasing my, my passion and I'm making an impact and I'm, I'm helping people. And so, so that's, that's been an interesting journey, but it's, it's been fun. And it, I think the hardest part for me is how have I been able to balance all of the things, having four gyms and uh, having a large team. We have 90, 90 teammates and they're my second family. So how do I pour into this second family that I have as well as my own family and keep space for myself? And that has been a challenge of how do I do all the things and it's taken me it's taken me the entire time. It's still an active practice of how do I keep the discipline to make space for everything and how do I let go of the things that are not serving me. So, whew!
all right, gang. That was deep. That was really deep. So thanks for tuning in. Thanks for checking into the Burn Bootcamp podcast. I appreciate you all. If you are ever in St. Louis, come check us out. Manchester, O'Fallon, South County, and Kirkwood. And if you come later on this year, St. Charles as well. Thanks, guys. Two claps on two. One, two.